Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all well. I've been meaning to film this video for probably a month. Well, I haven't tried to make the video for a month. This is the first time I'm actually sat down filming it. But I've tried to like gather my thoughts to be able to make sense of everything. And then I figured, you know what? If my thoughts are a bit of a scramble, I'm sure your thoughts are a bit of a scramble as well. So let's do something about it and just discuss this book and the book I'm referring to <laughs> is none other than Chain of Gold by Katrina Clear. Chain of Gold is the first book in the Lost Hours trilogy which I've been waiting for for ages. It's basically kind of like the continuation of the Infernal Devices trilogy. In Chain of Gold we meet Cordelia Carsters and her family who are moving to London for the first time because Cordelia's father is basically in prison in Idris and he has to stand trial and so Cordelia and her family are in London to kind of become a part of the Shadow Hunter world in London and make better of the Carsier's name so that Cordelia's father might not die during the trial or as an aftermath of the trial. Cordelia then is kind of thrown into this amazing Shadowhunter world in London where there aren't any demons for some reason. It's a bit suspicious because in all the other books Shadowhunters are known for killing demons and getting rid of them to save mundanes which are humans in this world. But in London there aren't any demons and there haven't been in a while but then that leaves Cordelia more time to get kind of into this role to possibly save her father from death. And then suddenly demons come floating in even during the day and it becomes a massive problem for the Shadow Hunters. And Cordelia and her friends have to like fight these demons and it's like a lot going on. There are so many good characters that you meet in the book and the whole thing throughout the book is kind of, they're all keeping secrets from each other and those secrets make them do different things and my heart just spread for each and every character in this book because it's horrible and wonderful at the same time. Before you read this book you should definitely get to read The Infernal Devices because this is kind of a continuation of that trilogy. If you have yet to read that trilogy please read it and then read this because I feel like you will get, I don't feel like I know for a fact you will get a lot more enjoyment out of this book. Infernal Devices has a special place in my heart and so this book is gonna have a special place in my heart as well because it's I would say equally as good and that's saying something. Honestly like if you haven't picked up Chain of Gold do it. So without further ado now comes the spoiler part <laughs> where I'm probably gonna lose my head and it's gonna be very confusing. Please bear with me I have questions I've I've had a lot to say if you haven't read the book please leave, come back when you've read it, as usual. Uh. This book, I don't even know where to start. I gave my heart to these characters and Cassandra Claire literally took it and just ripped it in pieces. That's the only way I can describe this. <laughs> One, Grace Blackthorn. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I do not like that human being. She's not even a human, she's a shadow hunter, but you get my point. Honestly, from the beginning, when Cordelia is dancing with James in the ballroom in the London Institute and Grace Blackthorn comes into the hall and James just leaves Cordelia there, I did not like her from the beginning. <laughs> not an ounce of me liked Grace Blackthorn. After this book, I kind of resent her. <laughs> okay, I'm sure that Grace has her own reason. I'm sure there's a fully understandable explanation for why she did what she did. That does not mean <laughs> that I like her. <laughs> I'm sure that Grace is gonna be one of those characters in this trilogy that will have like some sort of redemption arc. Cause I'm sure that Tatiana Blackthorn is behind this. I also feel like Grace has her own motives to do what she's done. I could just tell from when Grace broke up with James in the beginning and removed her bracelet from James 
that there was some sort of spell on it because afterwards James was like so confused because he thought he was in love with Grace but then when he got to spend more time with Cordelia he was like all confused because he thought he was in love with Grace but then he wasn't he like started to feel things for Cordelia and hair and nails only love once that whole Brazil situation annoyed me so much. I didn't get it. To me, it makes sense that Tatiana made Grace put that bracelet on James in the first place. But then Grace wants to get rid of Tatiana or like be out of her control. Tatiana obviously worked with the greater demon, who's James's grandfather. That was the whole thing as well. I just can't, it, it doesn't make sense. There's something along the lines where I try to figure out this puzzle that I missed a piece of information. When that greater demon wanted to like destroy James or like take over James' body, which was a whole thing, in the end, we saw that Tatiana had a conversation with that greater demon who wasn't dead, by the way. Obviously, Tatiana was meant to get that bracelet on James. Tatiana must have somehow made Grace put that bracelet on James like all those years ago. James has worn that bracelet since then. When Grace came to London, she took the bracelet from James so that she could marry Charles. It was very annoying, by the way. If Grace herself wanted the bracelet on James in the first place, why did she take it back when she came to London? She obviously knew what the bracelet did. So maybe in the beginning, she took the bracelet from James so that she can be free of Tatiana and marry Charles. But then, in the end, when things didn't work out for Tatiana, maybe then she made Grace put the bracelet back on or something. But that does make sense. Grace is now engaged with Charles. So she has that figure out. She has a way to get rid of Tatiana. So I don't understand why she needed to put that bracelet back on James. I don't get Grace's intentions. I don't know what she plans on doing with James. It's all very confusing to me. When Grace put that bracelet back on James, I got so mad. Because then finally, James had understood his feelings for Cordelia, I believe at least. But then because of the bracelet, he thinks he's in love with Grace. And then Cordelia, who loves Jane so much, is now engaged to James. Which, obviously, we all want. If one person tells me that they do not want Cordelia and James Herndale together. I'm sorry, what? After James came back from Idris after burning down the Blackthorn Manor. And Tatiana was, like, blaming him. And accusing him of burning down the manor. Cordelia raises and she's like, mm, yeah, he couldn't have burned down. Because, um... He was with me the whole night. See, like, this is why I love Cordelia. Because she does not care what happens to herself. She's so selfless. And she just wants the people that she loves to be safe. And then James is like, we have to go back and tell them the truth. Like, I will not let you ruin your reputation. She's like, it's over, done with. And then he's just like, well, I will help you. And then James came up with this idea that they could get married. Be married for a year. Cordelia's reputation will be ruined. It's such a great moment, but it's also so sad. Even Will got so happy. <laughs> Everyone just seemed so happy. Obviously, we know the truth. Like, Cordelia would have loved to be engaged with James under other circumstances. When James was like, oh, we both know we're only friends. I don't love you in that way. Cordelia obviously loves him in a more than just friends way. I'm honestly heartbroken. And I'm not sure how I will recover. <laughs> also, like, talking about heartbreaking scenes, can we talk about Matthew Fairchild for a second? I read Ghosts of the Shadow in the Market, so I know Matthew's secret, so I know how heartbreaking it is. Matthew Fairchild needs to be protected at all costs. Every single scene, he was either drunk or, like, tipsy. He was not well. And I find it so sad. Matthew and James have one of the best perp tie bonds ever. But the fact that James don't know how much Matthew is hurting because Matthew don't want to tell anyone his secret 
he doesn't want anyone to feel bad for him. Matthew doesn't want anyone to like love him or like not he does. Matthew feels like he doesn't deserve love or people to feel sorry for him. And it's it breaks my heart because Jem's the only one who knows the truth. I do have a theory that Matthew might tell Cordelia in the next two books. The only thing <laughs> Which I have a problem with is Matthew falling in love with Cordelia. Even though I want Matthew to be loved because he deserves so much love, I do not want him to have his heart broken by Cordelia Cursors without her knowing. Right, endgame in this series have to be James or Cordelia or I will throw this entire book and series into the sea. Because I'm clear if you're saying this. <laughs> Do not break Matthew's heart. Let James and Cordelia be together. Let Cordelia and Lucy have their paradise ceremony. And just let everyone have a happy ending. I vouch for that. I think that would be great. I think that would be wonderful. <laughs> and I think everyone else would agree with me. <clears throat> if you do not like um, Cordelia and James. Why? I was as excited about the whole wedding thing as well. I'm like, whoa, I love Carter's and Herodale's being together. Okay, the most heartbreaking scene on top of all the other ones. When Matthew was standing watching Cordelia and James dance during their engagement party in the end of the book and Magnus comes up to him and is like, oh, another heartbroken boy that I need to like help. And then Magnus could see Matthew staring at Cordelia longingly. I'm not sure if I want another love triangle. The whole Will and Tessa and Jem thing was like a unique love triangle. In the end, everyone had their happy endings, even though they were a bit spread out. I'm just not sure if I can deal with a love triangle between another set of Parbatai. It would be too much. And I don't think I could handle it. That scene when Magnus came is one of the best scenes. I'm gonna find the quote, because it, it was great. Right, here it is, right. Matthew did not reply. He was watching Cordelia and James. Everyone in the room was. They were dancing close together and Magnus would have cheerfully bet a thousand pounds that they were in love. A bet, it seemed, he would have lost. And yet, oh dear, Magnus thought, I may need to linger in London a bit longer. Perhaps I should send for my cat. That, that piece of information, those lines, is telling me, one, Matthew clearly is in love with Cordelia. I'll jump over that hurdle when we come to it. This tells me that Magnus can see that James and Cordelia are in love and James doesn't realize it because of the bracelet. I think maybe his love for Cordelia might be so much that he could possibly break the spell or the magic in the bracelet. That would be epic. I really do hope that my theory is correct and that uh, James will be able to show his love for Cordelia even if no one manages to take off his bracelet. I love Cassandra Clare for writing great female protagonists. Even though Lucy isn't the main protagonist, like she's still very much indeed in this book. I love Lucy so much. <laughs> I love when she figures out her powers. Tessa's dad is a greater demon, right? So Lucy, both Lucy and James got powers because of that. James kind of has this shadow thing going on. But then Lucy, so she could see Jessie, who was like not a ghost, but not alive. Like it was weird, but she could see him. And she could basically compel ghosts to do things for her when they were fighting the demon on Tower Bridge and Cordelia fell into the water, she compelled the ghost to come and save Cordelia up from the Thames. Like, that is insane. I'm so excited to figure out like what else she can do. That being said, James's shadow power things was also insane. He could be in this shadow kind of place which is where he ended up in the end. From him kind of in the beginning being scared of this place to then in the end of the book being able to control his powers and kind of control the, the shadow realm. 
where he was was so interesting to read about and I love that he finally managed to stand up to that part of him that he was scared of and also understand it. I just loved it so much. <laughs> Other characters in the book. Thomas Lightwood. Love that boy so much. Honestly, like, I love all the characters in this book. There are so many characters that I might die and I'm so scared for my own heart. We're in for heartbreak here, people. Whenever I pick up another Cassandra Clare book, I know for a fact that my heart's gonna break. I'm gonna fall in love with the characters and um, she's gonna kill off some of my favorite ones. So yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. I loved Thomas and Alistair's relationship. Like, they had those days in Paris together. And it was kind of confusing, but also like, I love this so much. <laughs> yes, Thomas and Alistair, I love them. When I realized that Alistair was Cordelia's brother, I was a bit annoyed. From the Shadowhunter Academy, I can't remember much of it, but I did read it once upon a time. Alistair was one of those people that bullied Matthew and James and like everyone. I really hope that Alistair has like a proper redemption arc. That boy deserves some love in this world. I really felt for him. I absolutely love Alistair and Cordelia's sibling bond. As the story went on, we learned that Alistair actually was protecting Cordelia from knowing the truth about her dad, who was an alcoholic. That in itself was so heartbreaking. Alistair was like, I wanted to protect you, Cordelia. I wanted you to grow up and have a proper childhood, which I didn't have. And then Alistair also had this conversation with Cordelia. When he was at the academy, he had to decide if he wanted to be a bully or be the one who was bullied. And for him, it was better to be the one who did the bullying instead of being at the receiving end of it. And as we know from reading the Shadowhunter Academy, we know that the Mirror Thieves were the ones that were at the end of it. I'm gonna tear up now. I cannot deal with this Cassandra Clare, why? <laughs> When they were in that ballroom at the end of the book and Alistair came up to Thomas and Matthew and wanted to like strike a conversation and then Matthew told the truth that he was the one who had spread the rumor that Matthew's mum had had an affair with Thomas's dad which led to Matthew's secret happening basically. I started crying because I wanted Thomas to actually accept Alistair and I feel like he was to the point where he wanted to be proper friends out in the open with Alistair. Even knowing what he had partly done to the Merchant Thieves, Thomas obviously didn't know the extent of it. And when he told Alistair, like, and never want to see you again, it was awful. Also, like, Christopher Lightwood is... I love all the Merchant Thieves. There are just so many great characters in this wonderful book. And I could honestly talk about it for probably hours upon end but for now I feel like that should be enough <laughs> I didn't discuss all of it but I said my main thoughts I feel like there's more I could have said but at the moment I'm just gonna go cry in a corner and wait a year for the next book in this trilogy please let me know what you thought about the book if you have any theories are there any characters in this book that you didn't like <coughs> Grace Blackthorn for example um, <laughs> let's go through this together and hope that the second book is as good as this one because then it might become my favorite trilogy that Cassandra Clare has ever written.